Welcome to Busy Bride 101, Wedding Planning Tips for the Bride on the Go. Today's podcast, we have a special guest. It's Tanya Damron with Tanya Damron Photography. She surfaces Eastern Tennessee and Western North Carolina and is an avid world traveler, and she's available to photograph your event anywhere across the globe. Welcome, Tanya. It's such an honor to have you joining us today. Thank you, Lisa, for having me. I'm so excited, as always, to get to chat with you. What I wanted to be able to do is talk to you about wedding photography in the climate that we're in right now and just maybe some to-dos for our, our clients to think about in the future when it comes to their wedding. So let's just go ahead and kick this off with what would you do differently with couples now as we continue to deal with the effects of the coronavirus? You know, Lisa, this has been a question that a lot of us professional wedding vendors have talked about with each other. Thankfully, we have already been set up to do everything online for years now. So we do travel, like you said, a lot. And so a lot of our clients don't even live in East Tennessee. They're not, or they're coming to East Tennessee or we're going to them. So we've already been set up to do FaceTime consultations with them. We've already been set up for all their payments and all their contracts to be done online. And so when the coronavirus hit, a lot of wedding vendors that were not prepared, they kind of had to think a little differently and think on their feet pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And I realized very early off that we were already set up to handle this and clearly not intentionally (laughs) uh, because no one, no one expects a pandemic. Uh, but that was one of the things that I was so thankful for. Um, also, you know, our contract was already set up to deal with quote unquote, what we would call acts of God in the contract. Right. Uh, and so it, oddly enough, so far, the weddings that we have had reschedule, oddly enough, it's not been as stressful as I thought it would be. And so I'm just, I'm very thankful for that. So I would tell uh, just any bride moving forward, um, hire a professional because most people, even if they were not set up as a professional, it was very easy for them to transition over. And that's always my go-to Like for a lot of things. If you hire a professional, if they don't have it figured out, they have the skills and the ability and the knowledge to figure things out very quickly. So I would kind of my answer is, you know, there's not a lot of things that I would do differently uh, because safety clearly always first. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're not going to do crazy things to put our clients at risk. Even, you know, in a normal photo shoot session, we always tell people, hey, if you're not feeling well, like just give us a heads up. We can reschedule an engagement session. We can reschedule a bridal session. Uh, And the same thing. I'm pretty honest with my clients. If I'm not feeling well, I would rather reschedule than to, you know, get around someone, even a common cold, you know, and make them sick. And and most people are very respectful of that as well. So my tip is honestly just to hire a professional because they have insurance, they have a great contract and they have plans B, C, D, E. (laughs) So so they, they, you know, they're normally someone that's not brand new into the industry. And so they're going to be able to think on their feet pretty quickly. Wonderful. When you are the bride, what would you suggest is the perfect photography package and why? I would say that when you are shopping around for a wedding photographer, it's not like comparing apples to apples. And so many people think that because we are offering wedding photography. For me, I would say the perfect collection for the bride It's not a one size fits all because that equals a one size fits none. And that's the truth. It is based on the bride directions that we offer our clients, but all of those are customized. One bride, she may need the full seven hours of coverage, but we may have another bride who she really, um, she needs a second photographer more than she needs more coverage. And I always tell our clients that whenever you're looking at photographers, the amount of hours that the photographer offers is not necessarily how long, quote unquote, they will, so to say, be at your wedding, which is the truth. But it's more so how many hours that photographer needs to photograph your wedding. Because if you're hiring a professional, they're going to know, hey, seven hours is more than enough to get everything that I need my team, like how we work together, what I shoot, what my photographer shoots, as opposed to I may only need seven hours because I've been in business 11 years full time. 
someone else may need 12 hours. And so when a bride looks at that collection, she may think, oh, well, I get more hours. And that necessarily may not be the case. That particular photographer may need 12 hours to photograph what they need and how they need to do it. And so that's one thing that I always discuss with my clients, because sometimes people, they really get focused on the time. And it's not necessarily just the time. It's the whole, like each collection individually, because if you know, you're having 50 guests, I always tell people my job as a professional is to educate my clients, because if they're having an intimate wedding, 50 guest wedding, they are not going to need a collection that has eight hours, three photographers, you know, all of this, you know, all of this crazy stuff. I mean, they could purchase it, but I feel like I'm doing my client a disservice if they purchase something that does not fit them. Because I would rather have someone pick a collection that's on a lower budget, but it is exactly what they need and then be happy with that and maybe add some products to it rather than get something that is a larger collection as far as pricing goes, but it'd be absolutely nothing that they need. Mm -hmm. Uh, But our job is to be a customizable service to our clients. And being a customizable service, I mean, that means also you are having really great conversations with your clients regarding what their needs are. So just by Mm -hmm. having that client go to a website and click on this questionnaire, it's more than that. Yeah. Being able to select what services are available. It's, It's really doing that as well as having a conversation with you to say, let's talk about everything that's going on with your event to determine what's the best package for you. Right. Tell me what you think about having the first look added in the timeline. Yes, I'm a big fan of a first look as most uh, photographers are. And this is always my advice to a client because I will ask, have you guys talked about a first look yet? And most people at this point know what a first look is and some people don't. So if you're a bride and you're listening and you have no clue what a first look is, it is when you and your groom actually see each other before the wedding. And how we do it is we only let videographers, myself and my team, come. We already pick out a predetermined location away from everybody and you guys see each other before the wedding. It's very intimate. Uh, If you want your man to cry, this is probably the thing that's (laughs) going to get him to cry because if you get him in front of 500 guests and you walk down the aisle and he can't say anything to you and you can't say anything to him and you both are trying to keep your composure because you're getting ready to speak in front of 500 people, I kind of think that that takes the intimacy out of it by not doing a first look. And I always like to tell people the story. I'm like, first look started. And they're like, no. And I'm like, how first look started is in arranged marriages. They would not let people do a first look because they were afraid that one or the other would think the other was hideous. And I'm like, and clearly, so I tell my clients, and clearly you guys don't think each other are hideous because you're getting married. And I was like, so when you think of it that way, that's kind of a silly thing to wait, you know, to see each other down the first aisle in tradition, quote unquote, based on that story. Mm -hmm. And some people are still like, yeah, you know, but we still don't want to do a first look. And I always tell people, listen, if you don't want to do a first look, this is not my wedding and we will not make you do a first look. However, this is what the timeline looks like if you do a first look, and it normally is based down to we get all the photographs out of the way before the wedding starts, even with your bridal party, and other than family photos. We always wait for family photos after the ceremony, just because having that many family arrive that early can add some stress to the bride, and that's the last thing we want to do. But I just personally think it makes the day go so much smoother than you do your wedding. We do about 15, 20 minutes of family photos, and we already have those lined out and people know where to be and who needs to be in these and then we just go straight to the reception so like I said in the end it's always the couple's choice but I do think it makes it I think it takes so much stress away and I actually shot a wedding this weekend where they did not do a first look and the guests did have to wait quite a while in between the ceremony and the reception just because even as fast as we can work there is still you know you still have to allot so much time and uh, one of the bridesmaids was is actually a fall bride of mine and so I was talking to her at the reception I said so based on today what do you think are you going to change anything for your wedding and she said you know we were really set on not doing a first look but 
now that I see that we could have done that right at the beginning with all the other photos, she's like, I think we're actually going to change to a first look. She said, I think it would just take so much stress away from us. And I was like, I just smiled really big. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. Check mark. Um, so yeah, yes. So I, like, I honestly think that it does take just a lot of stress away from your wedding professionals. It takes stress away from the bride. It takes stress away from the groom. And we just put that into your timeline. It doesn't, it doesn't really add any additional time to your day because you take that away from the middle of your ceremony or between your ceremony and your reception. But it also gives us a second chance that if we show up and you're like, Hey, we're doing a first look. And then all of a sudden it starts raining. Then we can be like, okay, that's fine. Seeing that it's raining, you know, you have the option to change your first look and do photos of you guys after the ceremony. And then we just kind of make way with the timeline as opposed to if you choose not to do a first look and it decides to rain after your ceremony or during your ceremony. And we were going to do your photos of the bride and groom outside and it's pouring the rain and then it's getting dark in the next 30 minutes. We have to all of a sudden do your photos indoors. And even though there's some beautiful venues, it is really hard to beat outdoor uh, photographs on a wedding day. Well, one of the things that, you know, you had mentioned earlier regarding that, whenever you do select the first look and you have that 15, 20 minutes to do the first look, that gives you that 15 to 20 minutes during the cocktail hour that you know that you can use that to join the cocktail hour. You go in with the very intention of, yes, we're going to enjoy the cocktail hour with our guests. However, if you're running behind on photos or if you don't take that take advantage of the first look early, then that's where you lose that time and you're not going to be able to join the cocktail hour because we can't move dinner at a different right, time. Right, exactly. Yes, and I always tell people too, your wedding day is so crazy and so hectic. Even if you hire the best wedding professionals on the planet, between adding wedding professionals, guests, you know, just the whole day, friends, family, all that coming into town, you guys really get very little time by yourselves. Because once guests start arriving, even if you're like, hey, I'm cool, you know, I have people to entertain them. I think by human nature, we still want to be with our people and we still want to entertain our guests. And you just don't really get a lot of alone time with your bride or with your groom. Yes. And so I think that that takes, that, that creates a little bit of intimacy with the couple that you normally wouldn't get if you decided not to do a first look. Absolutely. And again, I, I know there are some, you know, brides out there or maybe the mothers of the bride who are saying, well, you, you can tell us all this information, but my daughter is right. not going to have a first look, which is fine. Right. But I think that the more that we are able to educate others to let them know how it affects the timeline or at least some of the activities of the day, you will see mm -hmm. more people pushing towards the having the first look. So I like being right. able to at least mention that and discussing that with the photographer at some point in time. Right. I've worked with you before in the past and your photographs are just absolutely stunning. That's why I keep using them and, and posting them so much. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they make Thank me so feel much. good. I mean, <laughs> it makes me feel good when people say that. So people don't talk. No, just kidding. <laughs> you capture those moments that are just like, oh, I had no idea that that corner over there could look so beautiful. And sometimes I'm at a venue over and over and just to see that different perspective of, oh, I didn't know this alcove could look this beautiful. And you have that, that eye. What brings you the most joy in photographing weddings? Oh man, that's such a hard question. First <laughs> of all, thanks for all the compliments. You know, it, sometimes some venues are harder than others to create that creative like perspective, but sometimes, you know, it's really easy whenever you get to photograph at these insanely beautiful venues. Mm. What brings me the most joy, honestly, is the people. I absolutely love people. And if you do not love people, you should not be in the <laughs> wedding industry, especially as a photographer, because we are together a lot for your wedding, during your wedding, after your wedding. And I always tell clients, you can kind of like your cake baker or you can kind of like uh, your caterer, because as long as the food is great, they're not really going to be in your face, but you can't kind of like your photographer uh, because, yeah, we're going to be hanging out a lot. <laughs> and so I think it's literally the joy of 
Well, I would say two things. The people are just getting to meet so many different people because you're not just meeting the, the couple. You're meeting their family. You're meeting new wedding professionals. And also travel. Like, when I get a an awesome travel wedding just to somewhere where I've never been, it just creates so much new creativity that sometimes my, my brain can't process everything at one time. But, uh, yeah, the people are the big thing. Like, you can't. I don't think you can go into photographing people um, if you do not like people. Right. It doesn't work that way. What advice would you give couples on their wedding day? Oh, this is a Move good forward. one. It is, do not forget that it is your wedding. <laughs> because there are so many times that I see parents, friends, see bridal party, I see family that with well intention. Everyone is giving an opinion. Everyone is giving advice, even wedding professionals. You know, I'm not going to say don't listen to your wedding professionals because normally if it's something we stress, like time of day, that's important. But at the end of the day, it's your day. I think there's so much emphasis put on planning the wedding rather than planning the marriage. And Hold on, uh, hold we... on. Let's, let's let it sink <laughs> in for one more second. Say that one more time for me, Tony. Uh, uh, there is so much emphasis on planning a wedding that some people forget to plan your marriage. Even though we love big, beautiful weddings and celebrations and everything to be unique and everything to be designed down to the T, which is great. And I love photographing all of that. But it's just one of those things that's so easy to forget that when we're trying to plan things or please people or just be considerate because other people are helping pay for things that we forget that it's really about nobody but the couple. And so I just tell people in the, you know, in the planning of all the things, just, you know, go back to your why. A photographer friend, she, she lives up north and she has a photo of clearly their wedding day hanging at the end of their stairs as they go downstairs in the morning. And she said that she put that particular photo there. She said, because every day she wanted to walk down the steps and look at what day one looked like. And I absolutely love to love these people, but we don't always like each other. And so she was like, you know, I need to be reminded on a daily what day one looks like. And so if day one looks like crazy chaos, confusion, trying to please this person, trying to please that person, like that's not the memory that I want whenever I get married for my wedding. Day, like I want why I'm getting married to this person, why I fell in love. Like I want those memories to be in my head. Mm. So yeah, it, simple advice is remember why you're getting married, plan for a marriage, not for a wedding. Well, Tanya Damron, you have spoken. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving us your time and talking with everyone regarding next steps, what to do during COVID right now, and just life in general when it comes to wedding photography. So can't wait to work with you again. Yes, it's always so much fun. To keep up with us and learn more tips, follow Busy Bride 101 on Instagram and on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to get notified of new episodes and share with your friends. Always remember, your wedding is for the two of you.